Hey everyone, welcome to another video of you. And as you can see, this is the Transformers Masterpiece MP44 Cybertron Commander Convoy Thurgeon 3.0, but we know him as the Optimus Prime. And yes, he is a, a big old semi truck, which we'll go off, put off to the side here because, well, we got to look at the box, which yeah, it is a masterpiece box, all right. You can see it's a Convoy version 3.0 with a long life design. And hey, look, it's also very glossy, so uh, lights are kind of. Barking havoc with it, but yeah, you can see truck and robot mode on there. You know, Japanese 35th anniversary logo. You know, all that stuff on the top. You got a good looks Transformers logo and what guys in here. Side you have very close up. You got the side of the truck. On this side you have another shot of the robot mode, which is getting washed out. On the bottom you have a whole bunch of Japanese and they look at what's in the box, which there's a lot of stuff in the box, which will, this is why this is gonna be a very long review. And on the back you have a whole bunch of stuff about the figure, including poses and accessories and stuff about how you look, hey, this stuff was in the show, so we're gonna put it on the figure and all that stuff and how tall he actually is, actual size right here. Yeah, so there's a lot on that box, which I can't see tell because of, well, I don't read Japanese. Uh, he also comes with the instruction booklet, a uh, fairly thick booklet. There's a lot in here. Like there's a genuinely a lot of stuff to go through on this booklet. And they cover a lot of things. And there's also a little back here thing about the making of, which is pretty neat, the initial prototype and final and sketches and all that stuff. And some really nice artwork on the front too, which is also same artwork as on the little collector's card which is still doing glossy little collector's card. It's nice artwork and tech specs on the back. And some, I'm guessing that's a bio because, well, I'm just guessing, I'm assuming that's what it is, but yeah. Anyway, there's extra stuff right there. And yes, this is uh, MP44 is a full truck mode right here. You can see, yeah, it is a very much, the design is supposed to be a G1 cartoon accurate truck ish although realistic truck as well as you can see yes it does roll rolls very well yeah it's a uh, it's also a bit of a it's very large and you can see that rolls pretty well it can turn right there about that far before it's a stop there's a nice bits of chrome on the the uh Grill, the headlights, the bumper. The bumper also has nice little orange bits in there. This this is chrome, chrome, chrome. Chromed wheels. Uh, nice smooth paint on here. Gray, light gray and dark gray. Autobot symbol. And a little bit of blue and whatnot back here as well. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot there. Um, let's see. Should I? Right. You know what I'm going to do? Okay, so... Just to focus on the truck real quick as well. Yeah, you can see, yeah, it's the, the truck mode. Again, they're trying to do the more, for more realistic um, vehicle modes all the time. They're trying to make it more and more realistic and still transform to a cartoon accurate robot. And yeah, there's kind of this mess in the back. You can see that. However, I know a lot of people really don't like the messy back, but it's actually a lot closer to a real truck than any other Masterpiece Optimus has ever been because, well, Semi trucks have messy back ends. It's if you look at it, it's like a mess of metal and wires and cables and stuff. Though so that's while it's not still technically not accurate, it's still a lot closer than a lot of them. So uh, I don't mind it. In fact, I think I prefer it just because again, it's closer to the real thing. Which I like also see there's some paint um, scrapage here. That stuff's mostly hidden away in um. It's mostly hidden away in the robot motor and stuff, but. It is there, there is going to be paint transfer, just the nature of the beast when you have a whole bunch of paint. But um, yeah, uh, there are a couple little things on this truck mode on, namely these these things, they're supposed to clip in like this. I can't seem to get mine to do so. I know some people have, uh, you can see that's kind of lined up, but the second I try to line up the other side, the other, that one will pop out of alignment. And I don't know what the issue is. Um, Multiple people, you know, oh, make sure the trucks are fully tabbed in and stuff. Make sure, you know, there's a little, pl little plastics to shave off there. It just no matter what I do, I've done all the fixes people suggest. None of them work on mine. I don't know what it is. I might, I don't know if something's wrong or off or what, but that's just, 
Mine's slightly off, just a little tiny bit off, not to the point where I'm, it's like too bad, but at least on one side, but yeah, I can, unfortunately, yeah, you can see that one sits a little crooked. I suspect that one might, I might need to shave some more plastic off, but I tried the fixes and none of them seem to work at this point. So I don't know, it might be just, I didn't shave enough plastic off, but anyway, beyond that though, it's a good truck mode. I know it doesn't have the gray stripe or silver stripe or whatever, but it's one of those weird things where the G1 cartoon wasn't really consistent about that. So, eh. Uh, comparisons, just real quick. Actually, here's the MP. Oh, no, this is not MP1. This is actually the Hasbro 20th Anniversary Prime. But, eh, same mold, mold, mold except for the smokestacks. But, and battle. I mean, yeah, you can see size difference. And it's kind of come a long way in, in, in 15 years. Yeah, this thing's 15 years old now. Think, think, let that sink in for a moment. Yeah, 15 years, and they, things have kind of come a long way, um, masterpiece-wise. So that's one. And MP10, you can see here's where they, you know, more or less are the same size, but you can see different truck models. This is an accurate truck model, but you can see it's a bit of a different one than they um, went with here. But still, very different. You can also see the back, how much... Uh, taller this one is it's a good chunk taller so this one's actually more accurate especially since you don't just see a robot waist just hanging out in the back final one um here's te01b just because i don't have te01 you can see yeah again pretty similar size slightly different truck models but kind of closer together and um i guess kind of closer to being the same truck model than with this and mp10 you also see uh mp10 yeah this guy also flattens out the back end a bit, but he's got the smoother back end, which most of them prefer, but this is technically closer to accurate. Those are the, I guess, previous Optimus or possible Optimus, depending. Yeah, it's a good truck, that's for sure. I think I like it, I like it quite a bit. Also, you got the silver and yellow and red back here for the taillights and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and we're not gonna talk to the truck on the side, because we're gonna talk about the trailer. Because again, the trailer's got a lot of stuff going on too. Okay, first things first is actually, well, with, if you don't have Optimus, you got these little things down here you can pull out and now it can stand on its own. Great for that. Another thing you can actually do, and one of the accessories, and I'm going to go over the accessories slowly as they're necessary. I'm not going to do them all now. I'm going to do, you know, some of them are going to not show up to a robot mode, so just be patient. So that's this backpack right here, which can actually attach to the top of this, which you just got to fold this up right here and fold that around and a little hole right there and you just bap. and now now you got a rocket booster on top of a semi trailer you could also of course uh fold these out if you want for extra stability or for the trailer mode but or the base mode but is that in the back here you see this opens there's also this really cool is this 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 rear bumper slides out, which this rear bumper also has a nice little jeweled uh, tail light, so that's something. This rear bumper slides out and it actually holds several of the accessories. Not all of them, unfortunately, but several of them are held in place here. You can see uh refocus a bit. You can see he's got his axe, two blast effects, a little uh broken abdomen piece and two separate new heads and they have to go in a specific order and the reverse order to pull them out is well reverse this order put them back in but um this goes in last the axe then you got to put in the or before that you put in this little the busted up abdomen piece then and then that's the blast effects which are nice and these heads, it doesn't really matter what, what order you put the heads in. Just, I know the movie one is a little, on mine at least, is very tight. This one comes out pretty easily. But the movie one doesn't like to come out. It's a bit of a pain, which I'll do that one off. I'll pull that one off on camera to when I show it off. But, yeah, that one's just a bit of a pain to get off. It's a little uh, thing. I don't know what it is, but the movie one seems to be a bit of a pain there. Another cool thing is uh, these blast effects, you can plug them into this. Simple peg and hole. You can plug, you know, plug them into the backpack if you want. They're actually pretty secure, so there's that. Let's get back to the backpack later in robot mode. 
gonna go ahead and pull this off the side, this stuff off the side. Man, you can just slide this back in, it's just rails on the rail system. You can also see, hey, it opens up. There's Roller and the drone guy. I'm gonna actually bring this up a little bit. There we go, that's a, I think it's a better angle for this. Yep. Roller, the anti-aircraft gun guy. And what's cool also is, hey, once again, the ramp. So, you know, Roller can unplug from here and unplug from there. And just roll down that ramp. You can also, hey, well, you know, masterpiece cars, well, they can roll up, but, you know, like, sideswipe here. I think the only one who's going to be able to actually roll up is the ramp is Hound in the end. Because, well, he's the only one who's got the wheel clearance. Because technically, yeah, the little fit, so you can clear your masterpiece car in the back, but, yeah, it's kind of, it's still a little too low, but you can do that. Because it should fit properly. Yeah, you can see, yeah, it's the base mode, which is neat. That, it, you know, still does the thing. It's one of those weird things where it's like, it never used in the cartoon, but we always expect it just because, well, why wouldn't we? <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's a lot, you know, a lot going on here in the base mode. The roller, pretty neat. A little gray roller. The default, default's like this, but you can have that flipped up for the storage capability. Plastic wheels, nice little bit of rims, um, little siren light thing. Yeah, a lot of little cool accessories here. But also, hey, look, there's little tiny figures and her arm just popped off. That's one of the problems. I'll get to, I'll talk to that. Yeah, the, these little mini figs of Spike, Carly, and Spark Plug. Little tiny dudes. And by the way, yeah, you can open in there too. Um, the problem is they got posability, but the ball joints are so tiny, it's really easy for like limbs to pop off. And a lot of people have part reported there's breaking or just shearing off for various reasons. So play, be really careful with these. Be really, really careful. Yeah. So, uh, Carly here, you can, yeah, it's pretty much all of the same articulation of uh, ball jointed shoulders, which again, really careful, they pop off really easily. I believe there's a ball jointed head. Yeah, at least, at least, let, let, yeah, it's a ball jointed head. Be very careful. There's a little ball jointed abdomen thing, so it can, they can, you know, lean forward. And the hips can move forward and back a little bit, a little outward. Again, ball joints, be careful. And the knees can, do that yeah I've heard people basically they shear off because I think it's partially the problem is I noticed this that I think the paint's a little stuck on these and then the paint can get stuck so it's a whoops yeah these are tiny little things really tiny and you also got spike and spark plug they all have the same articulation they all can do the, you know sit in the same seats and everything another cool thing is well that's not the cool thing <laughs> that's going to be a problem uh, the other cool thing is if you look on the bottom, there's little metal dots here because those are magnets because there's little strips here, these little dark gray strips all over the trailer. Those those are have a little metal, a bit of metal. And so that's, uh, that's a magnet. So you can actually pose them and they won't fall over because of the magnet. So it's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, you have to do a lot of force. But yeah, there, there's magnets there. So yeah, you can do that. That's just like the old Diaclone toys, I believe. And that's pretty neat. You know, it's it kind of sucks. They keep, they'll fall apart really easily because the really tiny ball joints, but they're kind of neat that they're there. Apparently they're also in a fairly different scale compared, compared to the other guys. Yeah. You also see the gun stored here. There's a little slot for it. You have to put it in the forward slot or else it'll get in the way when you try to fold it all up. So just be careful of that. Yeah, this gun. This gun, which can also fold up like this. And there's a little rail here. There's a little slot here for a rail, which is on the cab right here. And if you want, you can also, yeah, you can, so you can uh, slide it on 
like so. So you can store it right there if you want. So that's an option. That's a thing. Yeah, you, know, you guys, you saw also so there's the uh, little gas can thing, which, you know, you can peg a roller here when you fold this around. There's three slots the gas cans can plug into the side slots. Both of them can. It's the same sort of slot system. So, yep, if you really want, you can ping them both on like that. You can also, because they're all you know, connected to the rubber hose. There's a peg here, which can, I'm trying to remember what that peg's for. It's, um, Thing into something. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, there's also this 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 tab right here, which goes into the slot right here, or this slot either one. I'll put it, keep them together if you want. I believe this peg is so something can hold it. I'm gonna drive myself crazy with that because someone's gonna scream at me about it. I think. Yeah, there's also this guy. Which, you can do the, his usual thing. Let me get this out of the way. You can do his usual thing, you know. Extend. Very stiff ratchets. You move this up. It's got his little claw arm. You know, his little claw arm. Extend that up. Which, you know, it's got the articulation that the, the old toy did with the claw and everything. You got the little radar dish, which can go up, and back here is the little dial. If you spin, you spin the dial around, <laughs> you can spin the radar dish. There's also these. You slide these out. Yep, guns, which these are also compatible with the blast effects if you want. Although I gotta be careful with the these. Yep. They're compatible with the blast effects. Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, going on there, but there's also the other thing, which is yeah, this center slot. You can plug it into roller. Only thing is, yeah, you can see that roller. Plug in the roller. Roller can technically tow it over. Yeah, it makes roller pop up a bit because the weight, but it can do it. Oh yeah, the other thing about roller I forgot is the that can open. So hey, look, you can make it look like they're you know tinkering, you know, tinkering with the engine or whatever. A roller, it's just, woo. that's the thing. There's <laughs> still more to talk about with this this trailer. This part right here, this blue part, this blue part right here can actually slide out. You slide it out and up. And hey, look, or there's these things. Which, you know, come separate in the box. But yeah, there are these things, which are rails, which then you can fold up these rails, rail bits, and uh, fold up the wheels. And collapse them up. And hey, look, you got a car thing. Now, I'll also say, oh, mine, these, if you notice, there's some markings here. Yeah, that's because my tab, something was up to the tab. Like, there was like excess paint, so I had to shave them down. And even then, it's still kind of a finicky. You can see that, yeah, it's a... Uh, if you hold it down for a bit and kind of massage it in place, it will kind of it will kind of hold sometimes. But yeah, mine's a little iffy. I still need to shave down one of the tabs, but it's kind of difficult to do so because of the placement. Yeah, you can you know just have it you know like this, ready to go, rolling around. You can roll them around. You got that. It's also this little thing right down here, which if you pop that out, little thing here, which you can then tab right here on roller. And now roller can tow this around. That's pretty neat. The other thing you can do, which uh, will come also come in handy in robot mode as well, which is if you move this down, this unlocks this so you can just pull this off, this piece, this can actually become a flight stand, believe it or not. But this part right here, you can pull that off and then this little black piece, you can pull that out. And this will also slot into roller. And now you got, yeah, this this whole thing going on, whatever this is. So yeah, there's lots of options here. 
And again, still not done. There's a lot more. If you lock this in and uh, retab this stuff, and just really simple, just you see it's a uh, big slots and little slots because it's a rail system. You just put it in the and then slide it forward. That. Make sure when you do so, also there's little railings down here. Make sure it actually goes in those railings, like that. I'm gonna reattach this because there's a little thing that you know the other stuff which you can do, which is. Also other stuff in this trailer, like this bit right here. Fold those down. You fold those down and... Yep, and close that up and hey look. Now you can have this sticking out. You have it sticking out way up, like that. You can have it sticking way out. You can have it sticking out a little bit. I believe it's the conf proper configuration for that. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, you can have it like this or like that. So there's that. You can also open these bits. These ones go outward. And then you can just, well, do this. Yeah, it can stick out like that. I believe there's a way to get it to stick out only a little bit, but I can't remember the exact configuration. There's, yeah, like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot to hear going on here. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there. There's a lot um, to cover on, on this guy here. And also you have to fold this up properly or else the, the truck will not close properly. Yeah, make sure it looks like that, that this joint looks like that when you close it up. That way it's nice and nice down there and doesn't you know interfere with the closing of the trailer at least not too much there's more to the trailer which of course there's the stand it up there's the whole stand it up thing bring these down which yeah they, and all the other they can the little guys can sit in these things too you can pull these down and now there's, it's the repair bay mode. No, it's the repair bay mode. And yes, there's also little magnetic strips on these as well. So once again, they can, yep, repair bay modes there. So yep, that's the repair bay mode. And that means that's pretty much the truck, the trailer, done. A lot there. Um, all accessories. This is part of the reason why the price is so high. Well, part of it anyway. So, uh, probably should get into it, which is the main event. Well, one of the main events about this guy, which is his transformation. And yep. Oh yeah, the other thing, which I totally forgot. I totally forgot about this, but uh, you can open the doors on this guy. And uh, hey, they can uh, fit in there, just like that. So yeah, you can do that, both sides. That's pretty neat. Almost forgot to talk about, totally forgot about, thought about that. No, yeah. Anyway, so transformation now. The very specific order you should be doing things because yeah, um, he's complicated and the stuff can bang into each other if you're not really careful which I shall show you what the results are if you're not careful with the transformation. So first thing you want to do is collapse the mirrors up like that. And then there's this little divot here. You can get your finger under there and this helps you pull away this whole side of the truck. 
from here you want to make sure um, it's kind of pegged in back here so kind of put your thumb on this and that will help you get this undone which then that's outside do the same thing on this side pull it out and then like that and then the size of the truck motor way out here and then rotate the red bit that's just right here there's a rotation bit right here right there rotate rotate and then this part right here there's a this, the tank gas tank there's a hinge right here you want to rotate this around on the hinge like that then you want to go ahead and take fold this the truck hat side in half rotate it up like this and take these bits collapse them in like so and then collapse the whole thing on this other hinge on the side like that same thing on this side rotate this bit around rotate there to close that up, fold that up rotate it around like this then fold those around and then collapse it so then from here you want to right here kind of pull the pull it down like this like that and then split them apart because they peg in right there that you know helps on peg things so the, unpeg the legs and then this this side bit right here it's kind of it's tabbed in here you just undo it like that right here there's this little thing right here you want to fold this up like that so it looks like this and then you want to come over here fold this down fold this around actually like that don't fold it up like that just keep it like that for now and then this you'll want to rotate you rotate and then this piece will rotate up and this will all rotate like this like so and then this piece right here you'll want to rotate it inward like that and then you can you rotate this bit in and then you can collapse this up against the side of the leg here that's where you go now over here you want to do this you want to take this and fold this up and then rotate this around this little the little circle piece you want us to rotate around 180 fold that up also also extending the leg out and then yeah you can extend the leg out like this you can also uh, take this piece and move it up like that so it sits flush and this piece right here I want to untab it and uh, move it forward and as you're doing so there's a little tiny piece right down here you see that it's a little tiny piece you want to rotate this around as well it's not being stubborn right, you want to rotate that around so it's rounded off like this and then bring it up and go ahead and tab that in right here and if you tab that in right there then you can take this this whole section this whole side section and uh, bring into the leg just collapse it in and sometimes there's a little resistance just a matter of getting things 100% lined up yeah get it all tabbed in there's some tabs up here for the, on the knee and up here in front of here there's also tabs in the front of the leg right here like that so it's all tabbed in and take this piece and collapse it over that wheel Make sure again the tabs lined up because I just shifted out of alignment. But yeah, make sure it all lines up like that. That's all lined up now. And down here you can take the foot, move it forward, take this piece, close it, um, fold it like that. You can collapse it in. Then this piece comes off the foot right there, rotates around here, and that becomes a heel. And that's the foot done. And that's one whole leg done. You can see that one whole leg is done. Yeah, you can see how different that is. Okay, so same whole thing on the same process on this side. Untab that, take this piece, and I take this piece and uh, rotate it around like that. And rotate this whole thing around like so. So that's uh, in there. Take that and rotate it. Rotate that up. Rotate this around. Yeah, I'm kind of going the long way for no reason. And peg that in. Pull this up. Rotate this around. Like that. Extend the leg out. Like that. Like 
take this on un untab it, rotate this piece, that little tiny piece around, and then take this and uh, straighten it out and tab it into the side of the knee. Then you can go ahead and collapse all this in. Wait, duh. Not that yet, yet. Duh. Skipping parts. See, that's what I mean by it's important to import order. Move that up and then move this up. Then you can collapse it in because then it lines up properly. Don't be a doofus like I was. And you can start tabbing stuff, stuff all in on the leg. All tab in, you know, it's just good, good old just squeeze check. Then close that up right here. And do the same thing with the foot as you did before. Move it forward a bit. Unfold that, move it into the leg a bit, and then unfold that. Rotate that around and close that up and hey look, the legs are done. Which is neat. Now it's a matter of the upper body, which yeah, this can uh, be a bit of a craziness. Thing is I like to do here is uh, go ahead and uh, take this and collapse it down around like this. That's the back of the waist right there. Then you can move those down. Go ahead and move these down while you can. You can also move the the hips, move them like this, move these down. It's also, the only problem is this is going to make things a little uh, forward heavy for a bit. At this point, you can actually take the arms and we'll extend them out like this. You want to yeah, pull them out like this and then That gets them out of the way. So now bend up here, take this piece, there's a little center piece right here, and move that up. And these little side roof pieces, you wanna, on multiple arms like this, you wanna move those up. Like so. By the way, full disclosure, mine does have a little uh, paint defect right here, the little blue chip right there for no reason in the panel. Don't know why, you can barely notice it, but it's there. Yeah. Then you can take the front of the truck mode and untab it and whoops that just came off yeah I, i've noticed that mine on this one this little this windshield piece or whatever likes to come off it's not a huge deal it just pegs right back on but mine does do that i thought i glued that back into place too yeah because it's supposed to come off like this this yeah, comes comes up forward like this and up which then this piece right here what you do is to take the bumper fold it up like this and take these side pieces and fold them up like this, forward like this, fold them up. Take these little pieces right here and collapse them up as well. Collapse this up like that, and then take the bumper and collapse it forward like that. That's the beginnings of the backpack, the backpack. Take the windows then go ahead and open them like this. Back here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually move these arms out a bit. This gets you a little more breathing room. Move the arms out a bit so then you can untab this, this little bit, bit back from the back and open that up. And down here, you want to unhook this from the waist, the bottom of the waist, like that. You want to unhook that and be really careful with that hook. In fact, I just kind of cover up that up with your thumb or something while you're doing all this. While you're doing this, you can go ahead and start. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here rotating. You can just kind of grab here and make sure the head's lined up and rotate all this around, including that center roof piece, the side roof pieces. All of this rotates around. Like that and it rotates. Like say, now the head's exposed. Take these little side pieces, move them up. Like this, you can move this down. You know, fold this down. Make sure that's all lined up. If that's all these. Shh. Yeah, if these are all lined up, that means you got it rotated more or less in the proper spot. You can go ahead and uh, rotate these uh, windows around like this.
like that. Yep. And then down here, what you want to do is take the wheels. There's a little blue slider thing right here on the wheels. Slide that backwards on both of them and start folding that up. Whilst also under here, there, these wheels are these red pieces are tabbed into this gray piece here. And you kind of want to while while simultaneously you want to pull them out this way, whilst also kind of pulling them up this way so the tabs can clear. Like that. So they can move out like this. Fully, fully collapse the wheel in then rotate this gray piece and uh, slide it in like this. Same with this side. Fully rotate the wheel, wheel over so it's nice and flush. You can rotate this up and slide this in and up. And you can move these pieces all the way up like that into place. Now this stuff right here, I want to make sure to unfold that like this. Move this, make sure this part right here needs to go in like that. Go fold that up like that. Then rotate this upward like this, up in the air. And then this goes into the chest cavity. You can close up the windows right there. And back here, you want to make sure this is, make sure to finish the rotation. So make sure that's all the way in. And make sure this that center roof piece is all the way forward. So this can finish collapsing inward. And this can also, these roof pieces also kind of bring them down so they tab in like that. You can hear it click into place. And this, this piece right here, yeah, make sure it's collapsed up. And then this just kind of should just latch in like that, it just latches on, and you bring the head down all the way. And the backpack, last bit of the backpack, there's another clicky, really clicky uh, joint here. Like that, and the tabs in right here. Yeah, so it tabs in right here, like that. And this whole thing, this you wanna. There's a tab here which goes into that slot right here. You tab that in. Press, just push it down. You just push it down like that, and then the back here, if it hasn't already, just tabs in. We're getting close to the end. I swear. We're getting almost there. We're almost there. So the arms, okay, so one thing you want to do is open this up right here. You open that piece up, this panel unfold that. And when you're unfolding it, it also brings out the wrist, the, the hand, bring it all the, the, all the way around like that. And then you can close this up and make sure the wrist is all the way and close this up like that. See that, close it up. Also rotate the wrist around, close that up. And then up here, then the bicep out like this, close up this panel, rotate the arm forward, and then you take the smokestack, it's on a little weird rotation joint. See that, just like that. And you just collapse it, the arm in. Anyway, so uh, panel, panel, fist around, like so, rotate the fist. Close this up, close that up, extend the bicep, close up that panel, rotate the smokestack backwards, rotate at the bicep, and then collapse this into the torso. And you have MP44 in his robot mode. Yeah, it's a complicated transformation. Yeah, so MP44's robot mode, it is very much cartoon accurate for sure. Um, so big thing right here is while I was saying being careful, this is why I was telling you to be careful. See that? That's a nasty little gouge. That's because I wasn't paying attention and that little blue hook underneath the grill there, right there, I gouged it. Um, 
This is that's one of the two biggest problems with the paint is this yellow paint and this gray paint are both very fragile, unfortunately. So be really careful and be prepared to like um, people have done stuff like seal it off with like uh, there's like um, clear coats or uh, they use clear coat or pledge or whatever or repaint it themselves. I'm gonna have to repaint mine. But this one, this was definitely my own fault, but it is fragile, so be really careful about that. Very careful, but um, yeah, this is the robot mode for MP44. And yes, there's the the infamous backpack, but I think it looks amazing. I got this guy. And this I had this big stupid grin on my face for when I for like all day when I got this guy. I was playing with him and just yeah, this is an amazing figure. I think. Um, I'm not going to lie, yes, it's going to show a lot of bias or whatever, but I think this figure is amazing. Uh, even even with the marks, like I also, this 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 part right here, there's a little few that red, that one all is my fault. I wasn't paying attention and got crouched up, although it's looking like it's scratching as an evil, but again, there's ways to fix that. I have a little ding on like on my Autobot symbol. I'm not sure all you can see that, but there's a little ding there on the edge, but I don't mind it. I barely even noticed. Yeah, and there's some um, paint scuffing, I think, right here on the windows. But honestly, he still looks good, even with the scratching. It just it looks amazing. You can see that. It's just so cartoon accurate. So cartoon accurate. It's, it looks really good, I feel. Yeah, and um, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, one of the big things, you heard it through the transformation a couple times, which is this voice box. There's a little switch here. It's on and off. It takes off three LR44s, which they go in here. This this screw. Philip has screwed three of them going there in the voice box. Switch there. And yeah, there's um, six audio tracks, which you turn this on and Well, that one means which means you've reset to um, voice track one. And so you, each of them are like you know. So uh, five of them are Japanese, and if you want to switch between the six audio tracks, you uh, hold for three seconds until you hear the. When you hear that, switch audio tracks. And so now it's on tra track two. Now on track three. My understanding is these are from different different uh, series, different portions of G1 series. So there's that. So that's uh, it's track four, I believe. I don't know what he's saying. Yeah, that was track five. So this is track six. This is the most important track for most of us because that's Peter Cullen. They got Peter Cullen's voice work. I don't know why Takara did it, but I don't care. They did it. It's I don't know if it's a bone for us Western fans who buy these things or what, but they did it. <laughs> it's like the, when we all found out, it was like amazing. And like it's one thing to hear, you know, hear people's, uh, you know, have recordings of it, but it's another thing to do. It's a whole another thing entirely to hear it in person. It's amazing. Like, I don't know. I don't know what that was, but that was like the moment for me hearing Peter Colton's voice come out of this thing. For me, I don't know what, how, how that works, but there's all things. Like, I was like, oh, like, they shouldn't have done the... I remember I was there, like, I wish it wasn't so expensive. It was so dumb because, you know, there's the audio stuff. They didn't need to do the voice box and blah, blah, blah. They should have done a stripped down version without the trailer, but it doesn't matter anymore because now it's like it's got Peter Colton. So was, that changed everything for me. I know for a lot of people that won't matter, but for me personally, that changed a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing. Um, of course, his gun. Unfold that uh, fold that up, and he you know, got his good old gun proper size this time. Can uh, open up his hand, and once again, the usual Masterpiece tab slot system. Which, he has a good grip, actually. Both of mine. I've heard reports that some people like their right, the right hand on their Optimus will not hold the gun, but mine, both of mine do. But again, I'm just like my figures left handed. Yeah, I forgot to uh, point this out, but yeah, you can uh, flip the handle up like that and uh, have tabs in there. You can just uh, put it in with those tabs and right there, bam. And yeah, you can have, have his gun on his backpack. And the thing is, yes, it does, in fact, 
work on both sides. So there you go. Uh, something I forgot. So here it is in the middle. Uh, what was the other thing I heard? Oh, of course, there's a bent antenna, which you can probably see that. It's just ever so slightly the bent antenna. Yeah, you can see that. A lot of them come like that. It's um, Mine aren't too bad, but apparently the thing is if they are bent, um, heat. Be careful with how much heat. You can melt them if you're not careful, but I heard something like 30 seconds with a hot air, um, hot air, a hair dryer will should uh, do it. So, but just be careful, uh, you know, I can't be held responsible if you mess up your toy, your very expensive toy. But they are, some of them are bent, but it is fairly easy to uh, fix it. I've heard some people freak out because of the transformation, which is they've scratched up the face plate a bit when transforming. Just be really careful with that. Of course, there's the other thing you can do, which is just if you really are too scared, you just pull the face off. Yes, because you can pull the face off because, hey, look, there's, well, like we saw earlier, there was the uh, other heads. Including, the one the default is, well, as you see, the Season 2 head, which is my preferred head, but there's also the Season 1 head if you want. You can see the uh, difference there. You know, it's more rounded off. And then you got the damaged movie head. Which, you know, the movie head, this one on, on mine, the movie head is a pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, it it some I think something's slightly warped on the head itself, but it doesn't because it you have to really force it to get on. But there's that, and of course the uh, it's it's really easy to slide it on off. Yeah, it's just uh, a matter of uh, sliding on and off forward just like that, and it just pegs on to this little brick there, I guess. Simple, and the um, this piece. It just, there's a little slot there. It just tabs on. It's that simple. I don't know if there's a slot on this side, probably just for symmetry's sake, but uh, there's a slot on that side, I guess. But uh, yeah, you, know, you can do his little, you know, Megatron stabbed him. That was a thing. Yeah, it's just pulling that off. Yeah, see mine, I don't know what the movie head in particular just doesn't like to come on and off it's, it gets stuck i think there's something yeah looking at it there's like it looks like something was made too tight because it looks the yeah it just looks off but yeah there's also of course season one head which yeah looks more like a baseball hat which goes with well with his axe which this one it's not it's not like the others where it's you know fold the hand away or anything or slide it over the hand it's you pull the hand off it just it's just on a little clip which this would mean third parties. Hey, look, there's a way to you know do extra hands so you can cool poses, and that just clips onto this like so, and then you can rotate it. And yeah, now he's got his axe. He's got his good old axe, which yep, it also has that rotation point, so you can uh, have him hold it how you want. So that's neat. Um, I, I kind of wish, you know, on one hand, you know, the kind of, oh, yeah, hand. on one hand, I kind of wish you didn't, you didn't have to pull the hand off, but on the other hand, this does make it so, uh, you can, there's a possibility of, a like third party hand, extra hands, like, you know, I don't, you know, non-posable hands, like, you know, splayed or different poses. Cause you know, these hands are nice and stuff, but you know, cause they do pose. I'm going to switch it back to the season two head cause I prefer that. Yeah, I prefer the season two head. Thank you very much. Personal preference. You you can have your own preferences, but I just prefer that one. I think it looks the best. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I guess posability the thing I kind of been avoiding. Oh yeah, I was a forgotten thing I forgot before I get to posability, which is this, and the other thing. Which yeah, you can do that. And the other thing. The other things. The jetpack. Can clip on. Right there. This clips on, so side side jetpack. I suspect this presses the button though. <laughs> so now he's back to Japanese. Dang it, I'm gonna cycle through later on and get back to Peter Cullen. So yeah, there's that. And yeah, I forgot the final head accessory, which is uh Starscream here. Starscream, because that one episode. Uh Max Megatron's master plan. So this, what you want to do is you'll have to lift the head up uh, and untab the backpack. 
like that, you know, you have to untap the backpack because this right here, this slides over this um, tab here. See that it uh, slides over like that. And then you bring it back in like so. And you can pull Optimus head off and hey, look, now you got Starscream pretending to be Optimus. What a tricky person. Shame on you, Starscream, pretending to be Optimus like that. Yeah, that's kind of a neat thing, I guess. Um, for me personally, that's going to be a kind of a whatever. But it exists if you want to reenact it or you know, whatever. That's just one of those like you know, it's a lot. One of those things that feels like it's there, but pad the accessory count out a bit. And just that slice slides right off. It's pretty. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it just slides off. So there is that. Now we can get to uh, articulation. So first thing is, uh, yeah, head is on a ball joint. So uh, lots and lots of range there. Go ahead and move this forward a little bit. There we go, that's better. And lots and lots of range on that ball joint. Up and down, by the side angle, sit left and right. There's also this little platform which you can move forward so you can look really far down, although from the side it looks not so great. And so lots of movement there. Shoulders. Nice soft ratchet there, forward and back, all the way around. There's outward up here, and there's also outward right there as well. Yeah, you got a lot of movement options. Butterfly joint, forward and backward. Although backwards kind of a, yeah, backward, forward. There you go. Lots of movement there. Bicep swivel, unhindered. Elbow joint, single hinge, but you know, quite the curl. Wrists can swivel. So also you can, there's a little bit of movement here, although that makes things on tab of those. You've got a tiny bit of move side to side movement. If you so choose. Uh, fingers can open. These three fingers are on one hinge, all are fused together, and then you got this separate finger. There's a hinge down at the bottom base, and there's a second hinge for the knuckles. See, same with the finger. You know, same exact joints, but you know, it's by itself. Thumb can also go up and down. That's the hand articulation. Waist is a weird one. So he's like, oh hey, look, there's barely any waist movement. However, if you untab this part right here, suddenly you got a lot more plus an ab crunch. So you got waist rotation about that far and that ab crunch. And there's also a, a little hinge in there so you can get a little bit of side to side tilt as well. There's a lot there. Hips, lots of movement. Go forward very far, go backwards pretty far. And also the Google thing is because of the way this works is like how do you you know do this like well it automatically there's a little tab there which automatically raises that up so you don't break the sculpt outward again pretty far pretty far not not yeah but full splits there thigh swivel pretty good now the knees okay the knees. Okay, the knees are a bit of a big thing has been going on around so the case in the knees. There are two knee joints. There's the upper one and the lower one. A lot of people's have been breaking. Mine have not. There's a fix out there, which is pretty easy to do, which you can unscrew some parts and uh, glue the, there's a two pieces you can glue together. It's, it's better, better than I can explain. There's two pieces you can glue together and that will think. What happens is, if you notice, there's this little tab there, there's this little slot there. It's really hard to see, but see how well I can do this. Yeah, see that this little this little tab thing and this little slot right there. What happens is you're supposed to bend the upper knee, and then this and this as I do that, this will move up till it lines up the slot, and then that will let you bend the lower knee. 
But what happens is um, people bend the lower knee first and then it breaks or it makes the plastic inside shear apart and thus the, the ratchet stops working. You know, the knee will still bend, but the ratchet no longer works. Now, it is, there's a number of things going on between the uh, plastic. The, um, yeah, the plastic inside is very, uh, not, it's not very strong. So, and it's not strong and it's also pretty thin. So it can, it, that causes it. There's some of them which are just broken out of the box. And some of it is, yes, there, as much as people don't want to admit it, there is some user error here in that, well, like, unfortunately, yeah, the problem is uh, the user error on part because Takara didn't really adequately explain how the knees work, at least on our end of things. So it's like, I'm not sure if there's anything warnings in Japanese or something, instruction. there could be, I don't know. But anyway, that's so it's a mix of th number of things basically cause the knees to break. Again, it just becomes a friction hinge, but there, that means there is sheared apart, uh, plastic inside so if you want to prevent that yours is already broken there is a fix for it but yeah on mine it still works and people are saying it's inevitable that it'll break i'm not sure if that's true but i have yet to have issues and i've gotten some pretty extreme pose on this but yeah you see that's uh yeah so a uh, knee the upper knee and then lines up once that lines up then you can bend the lower knee you get a totally different ratchet and thanks to that low that uh yeah there is a lot of range of movement on the knees as long as you do it right and when you're going back, though, lower knee first. And then the upper knee. So, yeah. Um, either be like me and be really careful, or well, still be careful even if you do fix it. Or do the glue, do the gluing fix. But they do, ex it, it is like that. Um, and also, the nice thing is these uh, little knee pads slide up and down based on where the knee is. So, that's cool. So, uh, that is a thing. Mine's fine, but a lot of people have been reporting. I don't know how widespread it is, honestly. It's like, yeah, you see several dozen cases, but however, how many how many figures have been manufactured? And that's kind of the problem is like how many out of how many, how many are broken versus how many are manufactured. And that kind of changes the percept Our perception is, oh my God, everyone's is broken. But the could be just, well, there's like 100 broken out of like a you know, 10,000 manufacturer. I don't know. Anyway, um, so that's a thing. And the ankles. There's a lot of ankle tilt. A lot of ankle tilt. So there's that. They also can move forward and back a bit, quite a bit. And there's kind of a pseudo toe thing as well, although that brings the heel with it. But that's actually genuinely helpful. So you can get some pretty good poses if you're, uh, you know, yeah, you can get some pretty good poses. Um, I posted some on Twitter. Like, yeah, it's, you can get some good poses out of this guy if you're know what you're doing yeah that's yeah posability is really really nice just yeah just be really careful with those knees that's it that's the that's the thing just be careful with the knees if you're careful with them they should be fine but i don't know people are claiming it's inevitable i don't know if it's inevitable or not but i have not fixed my not i'm not trying to fix mine or anything because mine are still working so Knock on wood. So yeah, um, so that's the articulation. Uh, go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and do some comparison stuff. Uh, so bear with me for a second. Yeah, comparisons. Um, here he is with uh, MP. Well, well, you know, 20th anniversary prime, but MP1. He kind of, yeah, a bit of a height difference there. Here's with MP10, you know, roughly the same height, although proportions are a lot better in general, just period, just proportions are better. I mean, look at the, look at the legs and arms, particularly, you can see the portions, proportions are just generally better on the new one. And, um, here he is with, uh, TE01B, you know, again, it's roughly the same size as the TE1, slightly taller, but you know, you, you can tell they're also going for the same aesthetic overall. And uh, final, oh, not final, but in fact, uh, here's MP36 because, well, they're designed to go together. Again, you can see Megatron is weirdly slightly taller. Just ever so slightly taller, which is kind of odd. Well, I think. It's hard to tell. But yeah, there they are. MP36 is a little thicker, but eh. Megatron was a war machine. Optimus was not, but whatever. And if I guess final comparison is a uh, sideswipe here. Which, by the way, yeah, that 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 jetpack, yeah, Sidesweep can wear it. They made sure of that. That's really nice. 
They made sure Sideswipe could wear the jetpack. That's really good. Although, of course, like almost everyone Sideswipe, he can't hold his gun with crap. But hey, he can wear his jetpack, so that's that's something. Oh, yeah, a couple more things uh, I forgot to mention earlier. But hey, I remember, yeah, this. Remember how I said, yeah, this thing, and you can pull this off like that. Yeah, it's because this is also, like I said, this is a flight stand. And um, what you do is this little thing right here, this little, this little like a little slider thing. Yeah, little slider thing here. You slide that up, and that's supposed to lock this into place, this part right here. And then you could slide this, these little rails, if you see that, there's little rails in there, which there's little slots here. And you slot that on, and it's a flight stand. The thing is, it's not very good. This is, doesn't really actually lock worth beans. And people have tried to modify theirs. It's not the greatest. I don't trust it worth, and I don't trust it at all. It kind of works, but I don't trust it. I don't want to use it, but it does exist. However, if you, you know, if you do still want a flight stand, there's a little clear piece in there, which is an adapter for Dinobots stand. Which this just, well, this is pretty easy. Just, um, again, there's little rails here which go in there and boom, boom, done. See, flight stand. It's, a, it's an adapter for Dinobots flight, uh, flight stand or whatever. So yeah, that's 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 the final accessory. I swear, there's no more. I didn't forget anything else. That's all of them, as far as I can remember. So yeah, MP44. I haven't really. I've only kind of slightly, uh, I guess, um, vaguely alluded to the elephant in the room regarding the guy, which is the price, the other elephant, because. Uh, yeah, this guy's going to cost you at this point minimum $330. And that's if you're lucky. Most of the like domestic retailers are selling for $450. He's not cheap. Let's be real about Let's be honest about that. He is not a cheap figure by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, he's quite expensive. He is very expensive for what you're getting. He's a very expensive figure, and that's kind of the... The crux of the issue is, is he worth that much? For mo many people, it's gonna be honestly no. For me, who like collects primes and stuff, honestly, kinda yeah. I think he is worth that. Only because of the sheer amount of accessories he has. Yes, he has a ton of accessories. Um, the thing is, I think if they did a dual release, like I've seen this with Figma, so, you know, Figma they have the they'll release one and they'll release the deluxe version, which has a whole bunch more accessories. If they released a version without the trailer and less accessories, I th and you know that was noticeably cheaper, I think people would have been more receptive to this. But as it stands, because he is minimum three hundred and thirty dollars, and that's if you're lucky, and or you got or like me and got it on you know pre-ordered on Amazon a long time ago, yeah. That's a lot of money, and even more than that. There's more, you know. If you pay more than, you're probably paying closer to four hundred now. He's he's not going to be cheap. Period. At this point, uh, unless they do like a re-release without the a bunch of the accessories, then yeah. Even then, though, there's probably still a lot to do because there's a lot of engineering in this guy. There's the electronics. Uh, there's the paint and the articulation. They really went all out, and it, well, the size of him too. They really went all out on this guy. So of course he's going to be expensive, and that's the thing is um. There are two third-party options now, which are noticeably cheaper, which are roughly a hundred bucks each or so, somewhere in that neighborhood. Easily like a, you know, about a third of the price of this guy. But they do not come with the trailer and accessories. Um, what was it? They come with what the the axe, the gun, and that's about it. And maybe an extra head or something. So it's going to come down to this. But here's the thing: this guy is incredibly posable as well. Again, the trans his transformation is kind of insane but also clever there's a lot there's a lot here going on here so it's like does he fully justify the cost for a lot of people no for me kind of barely 
just barely. And, it's only, and for me, also, it's because it's Optimus Prime. If it was, it's, if they, they said, oh, here's a the 50,000 yen uh, Galvatron, I'd be like, pass. I'm not getting that. I don't want Galvatron 50,000 yen. I will not buy Galvatron 50,000 yen. But because that's Optimus, though, it kind of changes it for me personally. And for a lot of people, that's the, kind of the pushing fact, the, the deciding factor is the fact it's Optimus Prime. So that's kind of the... That's it's 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 difficult to make a value uh, proposition with this guy really because he's he's really good looking he's got amazing engineering but there's a ton of accessories which some people will cynically just say is they're there to inflate the price and there's also as many people have noticed there's a lot of QC problems including mine you got paint uh, and a lot of people's knees are breaking those really hamper you know really for a lot of people really dampen the uh well value prospect if you're willing to deal with those problems maybe it, it's really hard to justify for a lot of people i think and for a lot of people i understand if they're put off they, they see that price point they see the problems they go i'm not going to even try i understand but if you're willing to put up with those you're going to get a fantastic the, I think the literally, literally one of the best op, the best Optimus we ever got, and possibly one of the best Transformers. I'm not that's not I'm not being hyperbolic. I literally think this is one of the best Transformers I've ever owned. Like, even with knowing about the problems of even with that paint scratch, it's like that particularly with mine. That was that was my fault. I honest to God think this is one of the best Transformers I've ever owned. I enjoy playing with it. I enjoy transforming it. Everything about this I think is amazing. But yeah, he does have problems, and it's, and he's also really expensive. So it's I can I get why people want to skip on it. And you know, there's also the thing like people freak out about panel lines and rivets and stuff. And other, the others, the other two, the third party options look cleaner, which yeah, they kind of do. But they also can't do what this guy can do. I don't. Te yeah, Teo one can't do what this guy can do. I know that for a fact. Uh, I've tried. Uh, it there's a point where you're kind of BSing it or. Uh, you can't just, you have to accept that he can't do it. Uh, MSL1 can do some pretty good poses, but I don't like how it looks. So this is, for me, this is the clear winner personally, but that's up to you. I mean, there's only so much I can do to, you know, tell you one way or the other. But it's kind of down to you what you want and whatnot. And there's the other thing, which I completely spazzed on. In here is his matrix, which they're clever about how you did this, which you can actually kind of detransform it a little bit. You go open this up and if you want to, you know, get the matrix out that you can pull this out so you can actually well get the matrix. I always forget about these matrices, I swear to God. I always forget that these exist. They're like there's in the chest and I totally forget about it. Kind of like, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's I think my understanding this is pretty much the MP10 matrix just with some different paint. So it's like that, you know, rather than a clear jewel thing, it's got a painted jewel. Yeah, it's it's a matrix. It's metal. It goes in there pretty well. You can, they actually engineered a way to get it out easily because that's always the problem. Is like they're really difficult to get out, but you just yeah, you just detransform it a bit. Yeah, it's just uh, it's really cool. You know, just yeah, that's the thing. I always forget about those though. So sorry about that. But yeah, it's just there's a lot there. There's absolutely a lot here. There's a lot of accessories, tons of accessories, possibly too many accessories. So it's one of those things that he kind of sort of justifies his price, but not, but kind of, but not really, depending on who you are. Yeah, so it, I can't really come down to a judgment. I'm, I'm going to be super positive about it. I really like it. And I would honestly, if you're a huge Optimus Prime fan, you probably already have one. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's, it's not easy to, well, say one way or the other because of the problems like yeah you can get a you can get lucky and get one with like little to no problems but you could also get one with all sorts of problems i mean i saw a person with two right hands uh, people with missing knee ratchets someone who apparently had a missing foot but those are also common qc problems they're not they're not not common for this figure like common in general like there's always the random just oh what the heck's wrong with the hands or the foot or whatever it, it happens all the time it's, it's inevitable but it just i think it's one of those things that because he's already got the more well-known problems that are free pretty more than one case reported or more than one or two cases reported well with the knees and stuff that's gonna well just make it exacerbate make people think it's garbage and i don't think it's garbage i think it's again i think it's great and it's at least worth taking a look at if you can get your hands on one before you buy it 
try it, at least mess with it a little bit. Be careful with it too. But be, but just know that there's a lot, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of engineering. I think it personally think it justifies its price. If well, it's lower Amazon price. I would I would say if you if you can if you can't find it for less than four hundred, I would not go for it. But if you can get for, get it for less than four hundred, about three fifty or less, even if you give it about three fifty, go for it. If you can't, I would skip honestly. So that's the thing. It's just if, if you can get it for that that lower price point, it just barely um, justifies its own price. But if you can't, if you can't, if you only find it at higher prices, I would honestly recommend skipping it. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of this saga of MP44. There was a lot to talk about to the point where I kept forgetting about stuff. And it was no, almost, I'm almost certain I'm forgetting something else. But that's all I can think of. I honestly think he's great. But you may think differently. So uh, that's it. I hope you like this. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. You know, click the notification bell, all that stuff. Support me on Patreon or give me a, you know, give me a little boost on coffee, whatever. Or don't. If if you don't want to, that's fine too. That's it. I love this figure. So I'll see you next time with another video review.